What is up, Diecast Collectors? We are back with another Diecast review and a bit of a throwback Thursday? Yeah, that's right, folks. We're going to be doing some throwback reviews. We've done enough modern reviews this week to go get us into the retros. And today, we're going to be looking at Jeff Gordon's and his Richmond win, DuPont Richmond win from 2000. And, of course, you've got the 1984 Richard Petty 200th win car. Which is really amazing. The Firecracker 400 one. Which is his final career when it's 200th. And of course you got the Jeff Gordon Richmond 2000. And these cars have been waiting to be reviewed for the longest time. And they are amazing NASCAR classics. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go for the Jeff Gordon one first. The DuPont Chevy. As always is an iconic paint scheme no matter what race it's in. For Jeff Gordon, you recognize it as Jeff Gordon's car. So we're going to get this one out of the box. This one's been in here for a while, and oh my god, folks, look at this. So not only do you have a beautiful-looking metallic uh, finish on it, and when you feel this in your hands, it legitimately feels like you're back in the golden era of NASCAR with these Gen 4 molds. I mean, look at all the dirt and grime on the front end of that car. So if you like race versions, this is definitely a good race version to pick up. Yeah, there's a couple logos missing because it is a recreated, and look at that, you already have a little blue metallic paint chip on the deck lid. So even on the Generation 4 molds, the Lionel quality is, is kind of there. But, you know, not a bad car to get. I mean, if you, you really could replace where the automotive finishes used to be at and the Winston and all that. You could recreate that. Um, just get some decal packages and it'll fix it. But for me, though, this is still a perfect diecast because I never got a Richmond win for Jeff Gordon until now. So you got the front end of this thing or whatever's left of it. I mean, look at how covered up this is in just tire and just debris. It's just full of it right here. This is just incredible detail. So you got number 24, Monte Carlo. We got the grill tape, it looks like, on there as well. And the little grill openings, which do vary. I do recall these things changing track by track, so that's actually pretty cool. They got the accurate one for the Richmond race that year, uh, 2000. Very, very, very tiny Chevy bow tie right there. Uh, I got DuPont right there. You can see some of the tire wear just blasted on the hood, just poof, just sprayed all over. And we're going to have a hard time reading those because we got a giant nick mark right there from the race. So he must have gotten into somebody. There's actually pretty decent tire marks on it. It's really, actually really cool, actually. So you got Moog. Was that the Clevite one? I'm going to have to go to this side to read it. Clevite, Prestone, Simpson, Edelbrock, and 76, and another sponsor I cannot read down there. It's really unfamiliar to me, and nor can I read it. Oh, uh, Lionel paint chip this time around under the Goodyear. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Goodyear, Ray Bustis, Shifter logo I can't read, DuPont, the Winston Cup that's missing, NASCAR 2000, the official race car logo, you got True Value, Holly, 3M, Comp Cams, Gatorade, Spicer, Bowman, what does that say, Antique or Arrow, Arrow, Arrow Quick, Arrow Quip, I can't really read that, EA Sports, Nomex, Sports, something, something, sports, and Mac tools. You got the 24, Jeff Gordon's name in the signature form. Uh, you have AC Delco, Sork, and HendrickCars.com or Hendrick Motorsports. The cutoff Pepsi logo by the tire mark right there. They got the little jack arrow so they know where to lift him up. Uh, you got the Rainex. Wow, Rainex has been on race cars in a long time. Got. Slick L50. And of course you have DuPont. And these some of the decals have these weird outlines to it. Like Lionel has sometimes problems matching the freaking like literally matching the decal paper to match the paint. I mean, have you ever noticed that? It's no different here. It literally is no different here on this die cast. Good year number ones for the that year's style Goodyear logos. Got the back of it, DuPont Assurance of Quality Control. Uh, yeah, there's definitely not much um, <laughs> assurance of the quality on this diecast because I just pointed out two paint chips that were from Lionel. 
and not the raised version. Uh, you got DuPont Assurance of Quality. Yeah, we already know the Assurance of Quality isn't, isn't certainly is the best. Certainly isn't the best. You got 24 in black. Oh, wow. So they actually had a black 24 on it. You got Chevy logo right there. DuPont right here with that paint chip, that lovely metallic blue uh, chip. And you got the 24. Paint scheme wise, I mean, godly almighty. If you like put your hand in like a shadow, like the red will reflect back on it depending on the lighting you have, which is interesting. Black outline and then a yellow number fill in. And of course, you've got the Rainbow Warrior iconic paint scheme. Has the black outlines to each color, as you can tell. I'm gonna more more so focus on the race detail of it because a lot of people have seen this paint scheme already. So we're just gonna focus on that. As you can see, where I had Monte Carlo before. If there's anything else I did not point out, you could see it. And you got these two little. They're not cow flaps. Some hood boltings there. I don't have the proper terminology for it, but you guys can probably help me out in the comments. You've got underneath the window, you got the hood opening right there in gray. And if you look at it closely enough at the roof of the car, you're going to see that there's more tire wear on it. As you can tell, there is way, is a lot of tire wear uh, spray marks, even on the roof. Uh, it's not on the paint, but it's on the decal itself. I'm pretty sure it would be on the paint at that all been a decal. Or maybe it's there and I just can't see it that good. But as you can tell, you've got that going on on the top of the 24. And we're going to look at the most exciting side, or I should say the le the less exciting side first before we get to the exciting side again. Got some uh, ethanol stains coming out from that gas tank right there. You got Pepsi, number 24. Uh, let's see, the exhaust, the side skirt right there. See, the exhaust opening is right there. I'm talking about the side scrap and the black and the arrow. Uh, you got some mix of scratches on it uh, from the race. You got the, the slight, subtle tire mark right there. And you got some more of that dark wear marks from the race. Got some decal paper hanging right there. And yeah, not really much he wrote on this side. But if you look at the other side... That is where you're going to notice those two scratches again. Besides the Lionel one, we'll cover that one up, that lovely paint chip. Just look at that right front and how scuffed up it is. Now, if my camera can focus on it, because it does not like focusing on bright cars. There you go. As you can tell, that's a big, giant scratch right there, which is really cool if it's race version, and it certainly is. That's two more tire marks. I did not watch this race, so I have no idea how this happened, but... You know, it is on the diecast, and I am reviewing it. So you got the tire marks right there on the right rear, not the corner panel, but like close to the right rear wheel. The full black side skirts got some more than nick marks. You got a who is a little dent right there here too, as you can tell. And the little line out chip here and here, but that mark right there that I'm pointing to is definitely supposed to be there. So you've got pretty decent uh, scratch marks. For the race version, so this actually is pretty well raced. So if you guys like race versions that actually have damage, you can't really go wrong with this one. And of course, here's the chassis, really old chassis, 2001 Monte Carlo, absolutely spectacular, man. I, th this is uh, the 2001, 2002 Monte Carlo mold from Lionel was better than anything we got from the actual brands back then. So I'll give them. You see, Lionel does better molds than they do decal quality. But this paint scheme, though, looks really good. I like how they sprayed it that metallic blue. Really, really nice. And it goes well with that number. That black outline and the yellow number filling just pops that number out. And, of course, the signature also looks really good, too, and really authentic as well. So that's actually really cool about it. So you guys a 360 review so we can move on to the next die cast. Really, really detailed car, man. This one, I mean, yeah, there's missing some sponsor detail, obviously, but... In terms of race damage, I'd say they're pretty spot on. So that's not really bad there. Pretty good authentic details on that. So there's the Jeff Gordon one. The Richmond win. Definitely pick that one up if you're a Jeff Gordon fan. And maybe have a custom maker fill in those blanks. So now we're going to be looking at the Richard Petty's 200th win car. So we're going to take a look at this one for the first time out of the box. Could pick this one up yesterday to do the video on it today so 
It's gonna be really exciting to hold this one in my hands because I, this is so authentic. Here it is, and holy cow. Is this more detailed than what I thought or what? Oh my god! Look how detailed that is. I mean, look at that. The, the nose is its own piece. The bumper is its own piece. Damn, you can really give these guys a chrome horn because this car actually does have the chrome horn and the bumpers of it. And it has the chrome wheels and the colored chassis. Wow. Wow. I, I know it's obvious to bring this up, bring this up, but I think this, this release is going to be a success in my opinion. Uh, let's see. We got 43 STP. He got the Pontiac grill and headlights, which is a fully plastic detail. Unlike the other one, which it's actually supposed to be like that way because it actually did go to all all fiberglass in the early 2000s and 1990s. But if we're talking about the 80s, pieces were actually separated. Like an actual streetcar, as you can tell, there's a bit of evolution there. And as I noticed that, I noticed another paint chip on the underneath the Monte Carlo logo of that. I don't know if that's Lionel or grill tape, but yeah, we're just going to leave that alone for now. Uh, this one here is actually really, really good. Now, the bumper is pretty clean, so I don't know if that's accurate to how he finished. Uh, but it is like that on this car. Got a pointy front end. Pontiacs always have that. Ooh, there's even um, a little black speck there. I don't know if that's a chip or if that's actually... It's just, eh, it looks like it's a circle, so it probably is supposed to be there. He got the Pontiac STP right there. Oh my god, we gotta read all these slow goes. <laughs> We got to read all of them, right? So he got, let's see, Moroso, Moroso, Bell, Monroe, STP76, the Shifty logo again, the R dash logo, because I can't really read it. Oh man, as soon as I was going to start reading all those, the tire mark from the race. Goodyear right there, he got Champion, STP, SP. I'm going to have to read the other side because you can see it better here because this is the clean side. A bit of exhaust uh, dust right there. Champion STP Union NASCAR Race Car Ram Tri or TRW SR Moog Edelbrock Goodies Die Hard Crane Cams. Pretty cool logo, Crane Cams, because you got the C and you got the rain and the M's of Crane Cams. You got the Molly, oh, I almost said Molly, that's Holly EFI, it looks like. Got, oh, man, I can't really read the blue one, but then blue M sponsor. Russell, Victor, Perfectly Circle, uh, I can't really read this other logo, did that say Champagne, Champion, I can't really read that, and of course you got 7-Eleven, got the Moon, the S something logo, I cannot read what that says at all, you have this logo here, Canon and Curb, so Curb Records, oh wow, Curb Records is really old, because I actually have a truck for Grant Enfinger that has that from like 2018, 2019 around there, pretty old sponsor, I gotta bring that up, Oil Treatment, STP, Pontiac, Motorsports Designs, got the Richard Petty's logo on the back with the two STPs, that, and the Pontiac logo is crooked, that's just amazing, even on the 80s diecast, the quality still kind of janky, Jensen Car Audio, and the 43, spray painted first in the Petty Blue, and of course the number itself, oh, so we got a little bit of a different type, right, so you got the side with the dark blue and the white number filling with that shadowing effect, and it even has like a slight other orange a little bit, whereas on the roof, as you can tell, it's got a circle with the very, very dark bloodish reddish, oh wow, that's actually a pretty brown almost, <laughs> A uh, circle around that with the white outline and of course the same type of 43 but the outline is not a shadow it's actually a solid outline just kind of how it is on the STP circle paint scheme wise though it's a really iconic one you can't go wrong with this one uh, it is a classic so of course you have the heady blue you've got the stripe which has a white outline to it that goes all the way around and of course, it's got that bright day glow orange, which the camera is going to keep making it look like it's red. And of course, you got the sides. It's got the stripes. So you got the thin blue outline on the both sides of that white stripe. And then a solid blue line going straight across, wrapping across the side perfectly straight until you get to the back. Kind of pushes up a little bit towards the back and it stops right towards where the spoiler is. 
and there's two little corners of the uh, spoiler in that petty blue color. And of course, that bright orange again with the brake dust, and the chrome wheels, and now the race detail, got some tire buildup all across the hood, a little bit, let me see if I can get, yeah, there is a bit of wear to it, I, I, I kind of noticed it now, there is a bit of wear to it, and you got the hood pins, very, very subtle detail, the chrome wheels look good with it, and of course, you have the donut mark right there, you've got a bunch of little ding marks on this side, particularly this side, that side is really bad, uh, when it comes to the damage, um, and of course, if you look at the other side, more clean, just the brake dust and then some tire, so, you know, it, this car is actually a pretty clean race version, other than this side. So, if you don't already have the clean version, which I don't, I certainly wasn't alive to get one. Uh, this one's not that far off, besides having some race damage to it. Very subtle with the race damage. And, of oh, wow, is that Petty's face again? How the hell did they get the decal that small? I guess that's what they used back then to know where to lift him up with the jack. Very interesting right there. And, of course, the roof has a bit of race wear as well. So, the 360 view of it, it's obviously the most... I would say this is the most detailed Lionel car, car that Lionel has ever made. Pretty interesting things about it. I am going to bring this up as I do the 360. Here's the chassis. Very old school. EL. So, this is an EL mold car. Thank you. Can you imagine a PTC mold retro car? Oh, my God. Would that not be good? Uh, but, the car itself... Looks good. I mean, the colored roll cage is something retro. They didn't even do that for the Richmond one. <laughs> Chrome roll cages are definitely an original thing. Obviously, the customs that I have done have had these before. Oh. Oh! I didn't even notice this, too. Look, you can see, like, how the window is kind of dusty. Notice that, like, square of clear real estate on the window. I mean, look at that. It's more clear so the driver can see while the rest of this is kind of shadowed out. Oh, that's why that black dot was there. It's actually because of that. I didn't even notice that until now. You see that, guys? Let me take my finger off. You can see the difference between the driver's uh, real estate of windshield and compared to the rest of it being shadowed out. And another black line. Wow. Okay, that's really detailed. That's amazing. That's awesome right there. That is awesome race detail. I did not notice that until now. So that is amazing. Props to Lionel for doing that. I know they're good at window printing. They do it on the Gold Series. But this, that right there is unbelievable detail. That I didn't even notice. There's probably other things I didn't even notice about it. Uh, I'm going to give you guys another 360 review to see in case I notice anything else. Wow. Wow, that's actually really, really good. Wow, so Lionel actually does care about detail after all, guys. I mean, look at that. Uh, the roll cage, though, I got to bring this up. A toothpick somewhere Ooh, does that look at how open that window is let me get a toothpick so i can show you guys this so you see how like other die casts have like the closed uh windows in that rear quarter as you can tell they have all that closed out this though as you can tell is open and i'm gonna show you guys where so you can see that you see that window right there that is an open piece like, the, I don't know if in real life this was open like this, or if this is just a thing, a Lionel inconsistency. But, yeah, that right there is an open windshield. I can stick a, a toothpick between there. Wow. And there's no window on this side either, so... I gotta check the real race version to see if those details I just pointed out are accurate. But this is a fantastic 164 cut uh, die cast. That's amazing. As a customizer, I'd love to know how to do those window effects. That's really good. Other than that, this is a legit 200th cup win. It's not an Xfinity win. It's not a truck win. This is a legit cup 200th win. Richard Petty, the best driver of all time. And I don't even notice. They didn't even put his name on it. They didn't even put his name on this car. That's how iconic this is. We don't need to put the driver's name. Let's get to Rich 43. It's STP. It's Richard Petty. So, don't need to have the name there, I guess. We'll yellow mark there as well from the race version. And a little piece of tire thick right there. But, really, really detailed car. Definitely a tat. And I was not expecting this car to be as good as it was. And, yeah, it does have the Lionel Racing working suspension, which is just great. But, yeah, spectacular. 10 out of 10. Get this die cast while it's there. It is a fantastic die cast. I wonder what customizers would do with this mold. Probably not a lot because it is an older one. 
But yeah, guys, that is the review of the two iconic race versions that Lino released together. The uh, Jeff Gordon Richmond win, and of course the and these cars actually are pretty. This one's a lot heavier. This one's light. This thing barely weighs a feather. I mean, look at that. This this one has more metal on it, like the nose, everything. So it's gonna be heavier. I'm not even gonna begin to compare this car to a next gen, but white Goodyears as well. I mean, just everything retro about it. Definitely get this one, and that's gonna be the review of both of these cars. The um, absolute spectacular detail of them both. Lionel does great race versions. I'll put it that. Even for the retro. So, which one is your favorite? Were you a Richard Petty fan or a Jeff Gordon fan? Or which one is your favorite one? I mean, it's it's up to you guys. So, thank you guys for checking this one out. For more diecast reviews and even retro ones like this one, comment, like, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next diecast reviews. And always remember to make sure you know what you're doing when you're putting decals on your diecast, folks. So, two very impressive raced version retro cars. So always remember to make sure you know what you're doing when you're putting decals in your diecast.